What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and the final episode in the Iron Man Wisconsin series. In today's episode, I'll be going through all the details from start to finish, how the swim, the bike, and the run went, along with the nutrition strategy and everything in between that went down on race day. Before we do get into today's episode, I might recommend watching the pre-race vlog. I'll go ahead and link it up here or up here that goes into all the chaos and drama that happened at Ironman Madison last year, a race that had one of the highest DNF rates in Ironman history. 1,800 participants signed up for the race. Only 1,000 showed up on race morning because the conditions were so terrible and even fewer finished the race. So in that video, I talk about what happened and it also gives you an idea of why crossing the finish line this year was so much more meaningful to me. With that out of the way, let's get right into the numbers. So my overall time crossing the finish line came in at 12 hours and 45 minutes, 16 seconds. This was good for 48th out of 115 in my age group, as well as 275th out of 822 out of the men's group, and then 322nd out of 1,058 participants overall. When we break that down into the swim, bike, and run times, I did have a few goals set. So before going into the race, I was really hoping for a swim time of around an hour and 25, an hour and 20 minutes that I talked about in the pre-race vlog. We came in at one hour, 25 minutes, and 37 seconds. On the bike, I was really shooting for a time of six hours, but the bike course is notoriously hilly. It has 6,000 feet of elevation. My time ended up being six hours and 17 minutes. So a little bit longer than I thought, but definitely felt good with that performance overall. Lastly, for the run, I this, as I mentioned in the pre-race, uh, this was actually the biggest wild card for me. I really didn't know where that was gonna fall. I was hoping for a time closer to like four and a half hours, but the run ultimately came in at four hours and 58 minutes. So we still did go sub five hours, but that is definitely the area that I'm looking to improve the most in. Overall, combined with the transitions, which uh, T1 was seven minutes, 47 seconds, T2, four minutes and 52 seconds. Definitely was really happy crossing that finish line sub 13 hours. All right, so we might as well start at the top. The night before, my buddy Greg made the most amazing dinner. We had pasta, chicken, shrimp, the perfect last meal before the race. And I got a really solid night's sleep, which I was really grateful for. Fell asleep at 10, woke up at 4.45 a.m. And according to my whoop strap, got a 82 recovery. So I was really glad to see that the taper that I did the week prior worked as it should and my body was just fully charged to start what was inevitably going to be a very long day. Really the energy and the feeling, the emotions, everything that lasts throughout the day starts once you get down to Iron Man Village and you start being surrounded by the other thousand participants along with their loved ones and other spectators and the emotion down there is just it's palpable, it's a little mixture of anxiety, adrenaline, excitement, just everyone's just ready to get, you know, what they've been training months for started. I started the day by heading to the bike first, putting my nutrition on the bike, as well as making sure my tires were all pumped up, then quick stop at the gear bags with any last minute additions there, and then made my way down to the start line and the cannon kicked off at 7 a.m. It's really uh, somewhat of a surreal experience. You're in the corral, shoulder to shoulder with all of the other Ironman participants and it feels like you're marching into battle almost. You put your goggles on, cross that Ironman start line, hit your watch and it's game on. So for the swim really, my biggest thing was I wanted to try and find some space in open water swimming. One of my least favorite things is just continuously bumping into people. So that took a little bit of time, took a little bit of time to get into rhythm. But after the first lap, my time was uh, 41 minutes for the first 
1.2 miles. I knew I was right on pace. I really just tried maintaining that and also on the second lap, just trying to soak it in. The swim is absolutely beautiful. You have Monona Terrace, which you're swimming right under, which is just this, this massive building. Um, you can see the Wisconsin State Capitol just poking out in the background. And then because it's about you know, 7.30, 8 a.m., the sunrise just starts coming up on the other side. So depending on what side that you're breathing on, you have an incredible view either way. As we're coming towards the end of the swim, I'm checking my watch. Times are looking good. Got out of the water, you know, one hour, 25 minutes and change. And I still felt like that sub 13 hour time was on the table. The transition one in Ironman Madison is so much fun. You get to run up this parking garage ramp called the Helix and it's just lined with spectators that are cheering you on, um, ringing cowbells and such a fun iconic part of the Ironman Madison race. Quick got into my gear and at transition, got on my bike, walked it over to the mountain line, and then that same Helix uh, parking ramp that you run up on one side, you bike down on the other. And it's uh, definitely a fun way to start off the 112 mile bike. As I mentioned before, the bike course is, it's called the Hilly 100. It is somewhat notorious as I understand among all the Ironman races. It doesn't disappoint, but my strategy was preserve my legs the first loop, not to go too hard. So I was trying to strike a balance that uh, ended up coming out to about 18.5 miles an hour, uh, a little bit north of 150 watts on the bike for the first loop. And I was really trying to just stay on top of my nutrition. So uh, my strategy was 1,000 milligrams of sodium every hour, 100 grams of carbs every hour, and then 100 milligrams of caffeine every other hour. That strategy worked out quite well, and uh, the first loop went down quite painlessly. One thing I distinctly remember passing the exact pothole that I popped my tire on the year prior, and it was definitely great passing that this time and not having to take you know a 10 to 15 minute detour to patch a flat tire. And, um, the legs were feeling good going into the second loop and I felt like that time of near six hours was still on the table. One thing about the climbs at Ironman Madison, they're done Tour de France style in the sense that the fans and spectators tend to congregate at the steepest and most challenging climbs um, and it definitely makes for an incredibly exciting environment and atmosphere as you're just, <laughs> you're just leaving it all out there and they're helping get you up that hill, which there are numerous ones, but it really is a unique aspect, something completely different from Ironman Waco. So we made it up and I'm taking a look at my power, my time, my speed, and realizing that, you know, we're not gonna get in at six hours, but not too much further. About five miles out, you start to see the state capital again. And I should mention one last notable point on the bike ride was passing the 102 mile mark where my bike <laughs> became unrideable the year prior. If you're curious about more details on that, go ahead and check out the video up here, or up here. But um, it definitely felt amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing passing that point and uh, riding into Madison. So you get up to T2, quick get into your running gear. My mom was at the end of the ramp to cheer me on at the start of the marathon and um, really just hit the ground running, trying to find an even pace to settle into. I say that because very shortly in cheer run, you get to run through Camp Randall, which is the Wisconsin Badger football team stadium. It's a historic stadium. Tons of amazing coaches and players have been on the field there. And as a Wisconsinite to get the opportunity to run around the field there was definitely a special moment, definitely a moment that fills, I think, anybody with energy. And then they also have a photographer right at the end of the uh, lap that you're making. And so I definitely took that opportunity to get a couple poses and, and just have a lot of fun. That was arguably my favorite part of the run course. And I think you can see it in the photos that were taken. So I left uh, Camp Randall feeling charged up. Very shortly after, um, there was a frat house and they were just playing beer pong in the front yard. It was a Sunday, so they were playing catch two. 
and I just, you know, put my hands up and uh, they threw me the ball, thankfully. Got a nice solid catch and uh, threw it back right back to him. Those are the little things that I particularly loved about Ironman Madison. You just, you feel the community a lot more running through the campus, running on State Street. Waco was a uh, very beautiful run course as well. But in Madison, there's just not only the people that are there for the racers, but also just people out enjoying, you know, a Sunday, watching football, uh, walking down State Street, or you're just running through a college campus. So you really feed off that energy of the volunteers and everybody else that I just mentioned to uh, help keep your pace up and uh, just leave it all on the table. The first half of the marathon actually went really well. You make your loop back to the state capitol, <laughs> right back to the finish line, and then it sends you back out one more time. But I'm not gonna lie, the second half of the marathon was brutal. One photographer <laughs> took this incredibly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it captured the moment incredibly well. I'll put that here. Definitely in the pain cave, this was around, I would say, 20 miles or so and really at this stage I was just really trying to dig as deep as possible. Um, the legs were kind of starting to go on me. I did realize though that sub 13 was still on the table so I didn't want to walk too much but um, we kept chipping away, kept chipping away and then when we were at about mile 24 I realized that like hey we can bring this home and at that point um, you know the sun had gone down, the city was lit up the state capitol dome was just bright white and you kind of make your right hand turn onto State Street. The state capitol is just straight in front of you with the finish line behind it. And um, I was just fixated on that capitol, just really taking in the whole day, uh, everything that happened. Made my run up to the capitol, you run around the building and then the finish line is then waiting for you, lined with spectators and fans. I just kind of soared down the last uh, 10, 20 feet of the finish line. And once I got to that, uh, to the finish line arch, just kind of put my arms up to the heavens in, in gratitude and appreciation um, for what was a really meaningful race to me, uh, but also just staying healthy all year, staying healthy through the training and having that opportunity to get to go out there, do what I love to do, um, have my mom waiting there at the end of the finish line to get a chance to share that moment was also incredibly special. One of my good friends was volunteering there, so he was able to capture this um, picture-perfect moment that I'll, I'll remember a lifetime, my mom being able to put the Iron Man medal on me with the state capitol right in the background. And she was with me all nine, 10 hours plus last year in the rain. She was uh, such, a, such a huge supporter of mine. So to get to have that moment was just priceless. That was really how the race went down. You learn so much through Ironman training. I, I can't recommend it more to anybody that's interested in the sport. It changes your mindset on life, um, what you're capable of, how you approach difficult tasks and you just learn so much about yourself throughout the process, physically, but also mentally. All that being said, my next race is actually going to be a marathon. I'm really excited because I have aspirations to continue bringing my Ironman time down, hopefully get an invite to the Ironman World Championships one day, but I know it's not gonna be possible without a lot more work, and I think we're gonna focus specifically on the marathon to see how far we can bring that time down. So. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you with me. We're actually in Colombia right now. The next episode will be a run vlog in Cartagena, Colombia. And um, we'll be going around the world working on bringing this run time down. So with that, everyone, I just wanna thank you for the support. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe. It's gonna be an eventful next couple of months. And um, much love and peace. See you in the next one.